Okay, so we have been uh, we have been in a, in the book of Ephesians, and we have been covering uh, the sit walk stand uh, book written by Watchman Nee. And uh, what I'm going to do is hopefully provide a very brief uh, introduction. Abby's going to deliver the teaching, and then I'm going to try and do some uh, some hands-on application with putting on the full armor of God at the very end. Uh, anyway. Beyond annoying. All right, so Sit, Walk, Stand by Watchman Nee is a reflection on the book of Ephesians. Uh, Al's already covered the sit and walk portions of Nee's book, and that's taken us up through Ephesians 5, which we talked about last week with the uh, marriage and submission. Al's already taken care of the sitting with Christ where we begin our spiritual journey by resting in Jesus' victory. Now, I'm not going to to rob Abby's thunder because that's a very important piece. Uh, but we have the ability to sit because Jesus has already won the victory. So that's the purpose of the sitting, is sitting in Jesus' victory and, and with time. Resting gives us the strength to walk side by side daily through the world with Jesus. So that next step is walking. So we can't walk until we have sat. We, we need that strength so we can walk. And we walk through the world with Jesus. And until we are ready to stand, and that's when we begin warfare. That's when we're ready for warfare, is after we've sat, rested, we've walked with Jesus, and then we're ready for the standing piece. All right, so when we open with, um, with Ephesians 6, there's a lot in Ephesians 6, um, more than, than, uh, than I'm going to go over. And if you do not have this book, you definitely need to, need to get it. It's very thin, as he showed us before, but there's so much wisdom in this that um, you know, I encourage you to get it. I it's on Amazon for like $3 or something. I found somebody that was selling it for that. Get it. This is Al's, therefore Al, I did not highlight as hard as it was for me not to do that, I did not highlight in his book. But I will be reading a lot from this book, mainly because the wisdom that Watchman Nee has for standing, um, there's really no reason to go in and try to recreate the wheel on that. Um, when we, when we first begin in this, he opens the chapter of Stand with Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. With that, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this darkness, of this dark world and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm, then, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all of this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. So uh, let's go ahead and open in prayer. Um, after hearing this, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you have given us a place to stand. And Lord, I ask that as we listen to the words um, that we're going to deliver, dear God, that, that uh, 
we would have new understanding about what it is uh, that you would have us know in a different way about the armor of God and about standing. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. So in, in this, we must know, like, like Jeff said, we must know how to sit and when to walk in order to be able to stand. You can't stand without the other two things on that. And the reason why is because of standing um, requires an understanding of our weapons for warfare. Watchman Nee, he opens with uh, him speaking about the um, about Ephesians. And with, with this, I'm not going to read the whole thing. That's a lot to read, but I'm not going to do that. Um, could though. Let's learn what standing means, and let's learn about what he talks about. He points out the fact that these weapons, although they can be for the offense, you know, where you're, you're actually fighting for something, he takes it a different route because they're, they're made for defensive moves. They're not made for the offensive mm -hmm. moves. And the reason for that is because Jesus has already gained the ground. He won the ground from the enemy. It's already done. Therefore, we're not having to strive and fight for something that um, has not been won. It's already been won. So we stand in a defensive posture so that we can um, see when the enemy's coming to try to take it away. Uh, that's where Watchman Nee begins his talk on that. It says, we have our position with the Lord in the heavenlies, and we are learning how to walk with him before the world. But how are we to acquit ourselves in the presence of the adversary? His adversary and ours, God's word is stand. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The Greek verb stand with its following preposition against in verse 11, really means hold your ground. This is a precious truth hidden in the command of God. It is not a command to invade a foreign country. Warfare in modern um, understanding would imply a command to march. Armies march into other uh, countries to occupy and subdue, but God has not told us to do this. He hasn't told us to go into a territory and take it. He's told us to stand the ground disputed by the enemy, and it's already ours. We need not struggle to gain a foothold on it. So going past that, the difference between the defensive and offensive warfare is this. The former ground, we only seek to, um, when it's a defensive ground, we seek to uh, keep it. If it's offensive, we haven't gotten it yet. So it's, a, it's an idea of let's go in, storm the ground, and take it. But if it's already won, why do we need to even do that? I mean, it's, it's like throwing, you know, hatchets at the moon. We don't need to do that. It's already there. So standing in a place that God has called us to stand in actually will should relieve us of some of the pressure of thinking, oh, wait a minute, I don't have to fight or struggle with this. I can actually stand my ground and, and, uh, and know that God has already um, taken it and it's his. Um, does that make sense yes. on that? You guys probably have already heard all of this, but some of this was like new revelation to me. It was like going back and thinking all of what Jesus has done has not required us to go into a new territory and fight. And that, that is something that I guess I've had a misconception about is that we need to take that land because 
Jesus hasn't won it yet. And that's not the right mindset. It's already won. We just have to stand. And we're going to be covered in the armor of God so that we can um, make sure that we come out without um, injury on that. But I think the whole point about all of this, too, is resting in the fact that, that he's already won it and that we've been sitting with God. That in and of itself is the most important thing because being in a defensive posture for this means that you, um, that we can believe that God has already won it and, and that everything's going to be all right regardless. Otherwise, if we haven't been sitting with God in this, then we're, we may end up striving to feel like we're losing land and we need to, to gain it back. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, we don't have to fight for victory. We fight from victory. That's what Watchman Nee said, and I thought that was a great sentence. You know, there's a lot of wisdom in that short sentence. We fight from victory. And that's the victory that Jesus has, has already done um, on that. And it doesn't, his victory doesn't change. And it, it's, it's not something that may happen. It's already happened. And it's eternal. So when we have an eternal mindset about that, um, we can understand that we're, we're already overcomers and um, he's placed us in that to, to uh, be able to walk and to be able to stand on that. <clears throat> in Romans 8, 37, it talks about how we're more than conquerors and that we have uh, what we need to stand and um, the only time that we feel we can feel like we've lost where we were supposed to stand is when Satan comes in and he drops little things that tries to dislodge us out of the presence of Jesus. And anytime we start feeling like we're struggling and that we have land that we need to gain, that's a good time to say, okay, what about me or what have I done that is making me feel like I need to struggle and regain something? And then just look inward. It's as easy as that. It's not something that has to take years to do. Um, you know, when we asked for forgiveness and repented to God and asked Jesus into our heart, it was instantaneous. It wasn't a year-long process. That was instantaneous. Maturing is, is a process. But being saved is not necessarily a process. It's something when you know you want it and you ask Jesus into your heart, it's done. And the end of that. It is what it is. Um, so uh, remember to stand. That's pretty much all I'm going to say. Just stand. And if you feel like you can't stand, that's when you call on other people to say, hey, I'm feeling like I'm a little low right here. I'm not losing ground, but I'm having a hard time standing. Amen. And that's where you call on people and say, I need you to help me to stand. Whatever the case may be in, in doing that. So many times we get embarrassed as, you know, we feel like, well, I'm supposed to be a better Christian, but I feel like I can't stand. Who cares? Call on somebody. It's, it's a mindset. And, you know, at, at some point in time I was in a place where I believed that what others thought was the same thing as what God thought. Therefore, I couldn't let people see that maybe I was struggling. Maybe I needed help. I mean, isn't that what the community of God, the kingdom of God is all about? If it was all about being separated from each other, then it would look a lot different. But that's not it. 
So I come to a place of, of humbling myself and rearranging the thought process of, you know what? I, I do at times have fits of stuff. And, and sometimes before me, all I can focus on is, is losing ground. But that's not the case. I still have it, but I need to call on other people to help me with that. And that's what God, I believe, has for us, is to know to stand and to, to get our minds away from what the enemy is trying to throw at us, because the enemy will try to throw at it, throw all kinds of stuff, no matter what it is whether it's sickness, whether it's um, just seeing others in their struggle. God is still there. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 8, can you read that, please? I, I just happen to have that. Well, Good. I do. <laughs> and the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath and of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay, so one of the things that Watchman Nee was talking about, he said, you know, he had struggles too. I mean, and he's not even talking about the being imprisoned and all of that. He's just saying difficulties come up, I mean, and misunderstandings, and he's talking about that. Um, he's, he's saying that all of those things happened to him. And God brought to his mind the word in 2 Thessalonians 2.8 concerning the man of sin. And it says, shall, The Lord Jesus shall slay with the breath of his mouth. And he thought to himself, It will need but a breath from the Lord to finish him off, finish the enemy off. And here I am trying to raise a hurricane. Hmm. <laughs> he said, you know, Was not Satan once for all defeated? then this victory, too, is already won. So when we feel like we may be raising a hurricane and all we need is, is a breath to finish it, um, let's think about that. And let's call on God and ask Him. All of this surrounds us in the presence of the Lord and resting with Him because we can rest as we stand. We can rest as we stand, and we can rest as we walk, and we can rest as we sit. And anything apart from that um, will not be restful. It's as simple as that. But always remember, even in the times that we feel like we can't, um, we can't go on, the struggle is real, To, to ask others who are not operating in that or not feeling that, they're standing to, call, to help us to stand on that. Because I think it's interesting that most of the time our brothers and sisters are operating differently. We have different things going on. Some of us are we're on this path and we're doing this because it's, it's pretty even right now where others are going like this. You know, or they're going straight down and then they're trying to get back up. That's the time that we help each other. It's not about solving each other's problems, but it's about helping each other. Being able to stand in the midst of whatever is going on for that. That's all I have. Okay. Some scriptures just naturally lend themselves prayers. Um, obviously the Lord's Prayer is a scripture that le lends itself to prayer. But praying on the full armor of God is, an, is another scripture that really, really lends itself to prayer. And, you know, we're told we should pray on the armor daily. Anybody doing that? I have good intentions, so I'll probably start tomorrow after doing this. And then hopefully, as, as Abby said, hopefully I can have brothers and sisters come up around me and, and help me to stand when I, 
I forget about the armor of God. And why are why is all hell coming against me? Oh yeah, forgot to pray on the armor of God. Mm, oops, here it goes. Uh, so I'm going to show you one possible way to pray on the armor of God. Now imagine, if you will, a soldier or an athlete getting ready for for a competition, and I find it easier at least in my mind to remember because I pray often when I'm driving. Uh, that seems to be a good use of my time when I'm driving instead of paying attention to my surroundings. Uh, but I start with my head and then I work my way down as far as praying. So if you will, just bow your heads where you're at and, and I'm, I'm gonna <coughs> and just agree with me where you're at and in your own private prayer Toss in there what comes to, to your mind. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for real. So Lord Jesus, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you that you have given us the ability to stand. Lord, help us to sit with you to gain strength. Help us to walk with you daily. And Lord, I pray on the helmet of salvation. Lord, I thank you for salvation. I thank you for choosing me. I thank you for choosing my family and friends before all creation to be joint heirs in your kingdom. I thank you, Lord, that I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I thank you that you separate my sin from me as far as the east is from the west when I ask for forgiveness. I thank you for that. I thank you for your salvation. I thank you that you have saved me from the fiery pit. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I pray on the breastplate of righteousness. Lord, I pray that I would walk as a righteous man. I pray that I'll make choices that a righteous man would make. Lord, I pray that though I may stumble, that I would not fall. That I would stand up and choose righteousness, Lord. I pray that your belt of truth would be buckled around my waist. That I would speak your truth in love. And Lord, that I would know your truths. That they would be written on my heart. And Lord, when I get lost, when I forget, when I get clouded, Lord, that I would remember your truth. That you love me. That you have chosen me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I pray that my feet would be covered with the gospel of peace. That I would walk in peace. That I would choose peace. That I would create peace wherever I go. Peace in your power. Lord, that everywhere I go, just as I leave footprints, that I would leave a trace of your peace, of your presence. Lord, I pray that in one hand I would have the shield of faith. Lord, that I would have faith in knowing that you are God, that knowing that you are good, that knowing that you are my good, good Father. I thank you for that. And I would have faith, Lord, to know that you go before me and you are my rear guard, that you dispatch your angels on my behalf. I thank you for that. I have faith that you are there for me. And Lord, on the other hand, I pray that I would have the sword of the Spirit, which is your word. Lord, that I would know your word, that I would read your word, that I would learn your word, and that I would use your word. And Lord, when I've done everything that I can, with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, the gospel of peace, the shield of faith, and the sword of your Spirit, Lord, when I've done all that I can do, that I would stand, stand firm in the faith, knowing that the battle has already been won, that you are God, you are good, and one day every knee will bow and tongue confess that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Now go with me today, Lord, that I can maintain the ground that you have, that you have already won. I bless you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Or something like that. Because Scripture is living, your circumstances, when you're, when you're praying a prayer like that, when you're, when you're remembering the Scripture like that, 
your circumstances tend to make that scripture truly come alive. And then you can truly apply that scripture for that particular situation that's going on in your mind. Maybe, maybe you need a bigger shield of faith that day, or maybe you need a bigger sword of the Spirit, or maybe you need a greater helmet of salvation. Whatever, whatever. But these are tools that we've been given. And I, I love thinking about a... I, I really like um, movies like Braveheart and, and Gladiator, and I, I think about Maximus gearing up for the arena, and I think about him putting on his helmet, putting on his breastplate, getting that shield, buckling that belt, getting ready for battle. Because he's made us for battle. We are not weak. We're stronger than we think. So. And this is not an easy time. Um, as I said at the start of worship, we are challenged with commercialism. We are challenged with challenging people. I don't know. If you're, if you're, they say, uh, any NASCAR fans? Okay, so, Rubin's racing. You know, if, if you're not bumping out there with somebody, you're not in the race. And that's life. Life is like one big race. And uh, friction, friction is uncomfortable. And uh, this, is a, this is kind of a challenging time because everybody, a lot of me monsters out there, it's all about me. Get out of my way so I can get where I'm going. And those are the kinds of things that sometimes make us sour. And we have to remember that the battle's already won. We're okay. It's going to be okay. Anyway, any questions, comments? When you were uh, speaking of all that, it just... It reminded me of two different songs. Standing on the promises, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, boom, it's it's just it's taking that and you know, tied right in. And then you know, the stand by me song. I mean I, I mean that's just powerful, you know, and how it all puts it together. And uh, when I made my conversion, uh, the season was extremely, extremely front for me, and I didn't quite totally understand it then, as I do now. But uh, I'm really glad you brought that that back again because uh, there's a lot of significance to all of that, and bringing it back in and praying that way with something that's tangible. We know what that does from, you know, as we grow up in medieval times and all that, I mean, how that protects you. Um, but given by God, in, in, that, in that same thing, it's, it's deeper than a metaphor. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it's a true reality. of something I think you can just build on. Thanks for that. You would mentioned that you like Christmas songs secular songs turned into Christian songs. Mm -hmm. That Stand By Me could easily, it's written for a girl, a yeah. man talking to a right. girl, but you can easily insert Jesus in there and change that right into oh, sure. a worship song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think on the heels to that end, on the heels of the Jesus, Jesus movement in the, in the late 60s and early 70s, gave birth to the love ballads of the 80s. And because the church wasn't there, to take those things. I feel like, you know, the world, what, what's going on in the world is, is we're, we're sensitive to that. And I believe that God's people didn't really pick up those love songs of the 80s. And because you can listen to some of those songs, you're like, wow, you tweak a few words here and there. And that's a, that's a Christian song. I've heard that expressed as like there is a uh, prophetic Holy Spirit hotline that's always information's traveling out from it. Pick it up. Go with it. Use it. Sometimes believers don't pick it up. Unbelievers do. We were in a worship set with John Paul Jackson in uh, Gainesville, Georgia, when we when Abby was pregnant with Nathaniel. And um, part of the worship set was In the Air Tonight by 
Phil Collins. Oh, yeah. Great and uh, Fly Like an Eagle, Steve Miller. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you hear those songs. I mean, they really just did the choruses. But when you hear those things, you're like, oh, yeah, I can get behind that. I've heard uh, there's a song, Glorify, Glorify the Lord. I've heard it set to Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah. And you hear that ding, 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 and everybody's like, yeah, free bird. Yeah. No, that's not free bird. <laughs> uh, so it's kind of funny when you, when you hear. But, you know, the enemy's taken those things or has, has perverted them. And, and I believe that's us standing and taking some of those things Or if back. not perverted, and use them for less than they could have been. Yeah. 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 True. So when you were a kid, was your first Jesus song by the Doobie Brothers? My, no, first. my first Jesus song was Silent Night. Oh. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, when you heard Jesus yeah. done all that. Jesus is all right. Oh, you're talking about second. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, I, I'm so I don't think, listening to it back then, I thought about it in the same way, but it was. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. right out there in mainstream, and everybody's singing it and having a big time. Yeah, and Norman Jewish Greenbaum, Spirit in the Sky. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Edward Hawkins made that song. What was? We have that song. Oh, Happy Day. Oh, Happy Day. Yes. The Edward Hawkins singers made that song. And that was clearly a Christian song. Never was anything but. But it made top line, mm -hmm. top forty. Mm -hmm. So, Aaron, anybody else have anything? All right, so our encouragement to you this week, and as we end out the year strongly, is stand. Stand firm in the faith. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.